there, my name is April Sattel and welcome to my channel. Today what I'm going to be doing is just showing you how to make a very easy crazy quilt block. So this is how it's going to come out, just one of these. And all you're going to need for this project is you're just going to need a, I've got my rotary mat. You don't need a rotary mat, you could just use a mat and just keep spinning it as you're cutting if it's small enough. So. I've got that. I've got a 10 inch ruler. My blocks are all going to be in at 10 inches. I've got my scissors. I've got a seam ripper. I know, I know I always say I don't use a seam ripper much. I will be needing that for sure today. I've got my iron, my ironing mat, and I am going to be using steam. And I'm going to need a big bunch of scraps. And I'm also going to need some a foundation piece. So just a same 10 inch block. Um, that's the size I'm making. So I've got some a 10 inch block with um, that will be at the bottom. Mine's just a muslin I have. I had a bunch of muslin ones cut up. I'm going to try to use just as much um, scraps or recyclables or old vintage thread, whatever I can um, as possible. I just want to use this stuff up. I'm so excited for this project. The thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding, as I'm adding my pieces, while I've got this in front of me, you can see I've got my old threads here, so they're not matching on the back. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just do a couple of fancy stitches on top of some of the spots. Not everywhere, just enough to give it a little bit of um, texture. That's all I'm kind of looking for. If I do it now, instead of when I'm ready to quilt them later, then it'll just be a lot easier to have that already done. I've just gone and added a few little fancy stitches here and I'll show you the process of how I'm going to do that. Also, I am going to make up a ton of these. I'm going to make up 49 blocks and then I'm going to come back with a step-by-step -step tutorial at how to make a crazy quilt. This is just for a crazy quilt block. But if you want to follow along in the next couple of days, I'll be posting the video of a crazy quilt. For my quilt, I want mine to be 70 by 70 before I add um, any uh, borders to it. So I'm going to need uh, 49 squares, 7 across, 7 down at 10 inches. So I'll need 49 blocks to do the project I'm going to be doing. For today, I'm just showing you how to make this crazy quilt block. If you want to come along in a couple of days and work on a whole full-blown crazy quilt, come on back. All right, let's get started. I'm over here on my Janome 6700 P sewing machine. I really, really want to be on my Juki 2010Q sewing machine, my straight stitch one, just because I have such thick um, seams I'm going to be going through over here. Now, the problem is, is my... Janome just doesn't really like a lot of those seams, but the reason I want to do it is because there's a lot of stitches I want to use on my Janome. It has a, a, you know, a lot of different stitches that I would like to use over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and stay right on this one. So I've got my 10 inch squares beside me. That's going to be my foundation pieces. And then I've got my basket right here beside me. I think I'm going to jump onto this camera for a minute to show you. So here I am, and I've got my big, huge bin over here. It's a very tall basket, and this is my yellows and some, some blues I had picked out. Some of the colors I just wanted in this particular quilt. So I've got my scissors here. Let's go back to this one. <laughs> just bear with me. Okay. I've got my scissors here, and I've got my um, seam ripper. You know I don't use seam rippers a whole ton in my work. I just don't, but I really will need it for this because sometimes when I go over a couple of stitches, I'll want to keep ripping them out because I'll be cutting it. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. So you want to have that, and I've got my iron. Let's go back to this. I've got my iron over here to my right and my little iron in that. All right, now let me just show you what I'm gonna do here. Okay, 
what we're going to start with is a five piece piece of fabric. So just cut, if you have a scrap, you're just going to cut five angles. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So that one has five angles. Now you can have this centerpiece as big as you want to. You can, you can, um, let me try this. Let's see what this camera does. Okay, let's go with that for a minute. So this piece you can have as big as you want. I don't want too big of pieces, but I also don't want too small of pieces because I just don't want to spend too much time on this. But I don't want the pieces too big. But this one is perfect to start with. So I'm going to lay this five angles. One, two, three, four, five. Five angles. Now, I am going to be using all of these scraps. And remember, these scraps are from, I've got everything in here. I've got half square triangles. I've got pieces that, let's see, pieces that are already sewn together that I've cut off on other quilts that are all sewn together. I'll be using things like that. I'm going to be using half square triangles. I'll be using... You just name it, anything that I have. Clothes, I have all kinds of clothes here. And you remember I have lots and lots and lots of um, scrubs. I had purchased a whole bunch of scrubs. So I will be cutting into them, which I've most of them have already started to been cut into clothes. So I'll be using that. Seriously, everything in here is going to be recyclable. Even my thread, my thread is just going to be my old vintage thread that I have. Really just use up my threads. I love, love, love using up the last of everything. So it makes me very, very happy when I, um, you know, use up those old vintage threads. Okay, so what I'm going to do, see here's a, here's a piece of work that I had made some triangles at one point, and these were the... Um, you know, all the scraps that had got cut off from it. And I'm just going to use that too. So what I'll do here, I'll just take my five-sided piece and I'm going to find an angle that I want to use. So right now, I'm going to line them. I'm just lining these up and I'm going to go right sides together. And I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch following my presser foot. And all I'm doing is going to the bottom of that one side. So I'm only going to sew to about here. And right about there. This is where you need the seam ripper because I'll show you. When I open this up, when I go to cut this, I might be a seam or two. I might be able to pull it. See how I'm a seam or two um, in because I went over a little bit? That one I'll be able to just um, pull out. But if not, go ahead, use your seam ripper and just pull out to where you're going to cut. All right. Now I want to keep a straight line here because I need to have always the side that I'm adding the fabric to needs to have a straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut right. Actually, I can just probably pull this extra piece right off there. All right. And then I can probably just cut right here. So I'm just going to cut that straight. So now this line is straight. And it's not going to have to, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press this this way just to push that fabric that way. So I'll constantly be going over to my iron here and pressing that. After every time I lay a piece of fabric down, I'll go over to my iron. So now what I'm going to do, I don't want this this long because it doesn't cover the edge. So I'm going to cut this at an angle. I'll cut it this way. You can cut it any way you want to. That's what makes this so fun. And I did that so I have a bigger piece here. 
For now, I'm going to come down this way. I'm going to work around clockwise if I can. Sometimes I might get off a little bit, but and forget that I'm going clockwise, and that's okay too. So now my goal is to have a piece of fabric that's about this long. It can't be shorter. It can be longer, but it can't be shorter. So here's a piece. All right. So this is longer. I'm just going to lay that down. You're going to see there's a little bit here. You can either cut it or leave it. You will never know that that's in there. It's going to be a crazy quilt when I'm done, and you won't notice that little, you know, when you have that extra fabric. It just gives it a little bit more weight, and I like quilts like that. So, okay, so that right to the edge, or what you can, what you think is the edge. I'm not going to cut my fabric as I go because I don't mind cutting it now. You know what I mean? I don't want to be too hard on myself. See how I missed that though? I need to go back and fix that. There was a little hole here. I'm going to go back and fix it because I see that. There will be times I'm going to show you that I won't see it and I'll have to come back and I'm going to show you what I would do in that scenario. Let me see if I can go to this one for a minute. All right, see how I just, I want to give you some examples of what's going to happen as you go. I just sewed this piece on here, okay? But down here, see how I missed that gap? That's okay. I'm going to fix it now because I see it. So, But I'm going to show you later what I'm going to do when something like that happens when I don't notice it. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start my stitch where somewhere in the, you know, middle here. And I'm just going to come a little bit in a little bit more to cover that up. That way, when I break my thread, pull this back over, it's covered. That little hole is covered again. I'm going to press that. Don't be too hard on yourself on this. This is a crazy quilt. It is going to, it's kind of like, it's kind of like anything goes. You really, it's hard to go wrong. When you go wrong, there's usually a solution, just like I did right there. I just brought my seam over a little bit more. All right, now I'm going to cut this. I want this one to be cut at an angle. I'm kind of looking for angles. I'm not looking for a lot of square rectangle shapes here just because I want it to have more pieces than less pieces. I don't want my pieces too, too long if I can, you know, if I can help it. So here I'm going to cut. So I started here, then I went to here. Now I'm here. Now I want to go here. And it, if you get off track and you're not going clockwise don't worry you'll fix yourself you'll feel when you need where you've gone wrong and just keep your piece there if you had already added one and you'll be able to catch yourself back up at another angle there's no right and wrong really with this quilt so see how there's my line. I'm going to follow this line now. It's kind of like doing a log cabin quilt, but it's just such an anything goes kind of quilt. Now, I think I went way over where I should have stopped. I did. If I can pull those stitches, I will right there because my little side is only that long. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to cut this piece. Now this piece is going to match with this piece. So I'm going to cut it straight right here. And I'll bring that one right up to the top. Okay, and there's my next straight line. I'm going to give that a press. Okay, now I'm 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this little angle that's there because it's kind of throwing me off. So I'm going to cut that and I'm going to pull that out a little bit right there. And I'm just going to call this a straight line right here. All right. This will be a good time to show you. I'll use this big piece here. Let's go to this camera. I'm going to use this big piece. This is really a big piece. I had cut off a quilt. And I'm going to, I'll just cut it here. I know I won't use that much, but that just keeps turning into more scraps, more scraps, more scraps, which is fine. So I will, I'm going to follow, I think I want to follow this line here. Because I, where it's so colorful, I think I want to take up a lot of space. Okay. Just make sure when you do this that you're over your foundation piece. Because we're going to trim this up when we're done. So I'm going to sew from here to where this left off. You do not have to be precise on your quarter of an inch at all because you are just, you just are trying to cover up that line there. All right, just going to give this one a press now. Okay. And now you can see that is going to take up a big piece. I'm going to turn this over so you can see what I'm talking about. So basically, we're just looking to make sure we're going to have overhang, okay? I'm not cutting this down right now. I'm going to cut it down when I trim it. So you'll see I'll have all this left. If I want to trim it now, I could, but I like to do it in the end. So I'm going to leave that. That covered that. But... See how I don't have, let me go to this camera. See how right here, let's see. See how I don't have enough fabric here? And I don't want to put a little tiny piece there. So I mean, I'm going to just cut this at some other angle to get rid, so I can put a bigger piece there. Show you what I mean. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to guess but I want to, I need to keep a straight angle. So let's just go back to here. And I think what I'll do is I'll just cut this at this angle. Okay. So now I've got this straight angle I'll go with. And I'm not going to use this same piece because it will be too matchy and I, uh, you know, it will. F I don't. I'm going to save this piece for a different part of this quilt. Here's a piece of fabric that is already sewn together. It was cut off another quilt that I had made. So let me just use that. It's got enough color in it, and it's. It looks like it's going to be long enough right there. Why don't I just sew that on and see where that takes me? So, I just want my overhang over. Come down, my stop point's right about here. And I'm gonna guess, I am I just don't care to mark it, I don't care to do anything, because I don't mind pulling those couple stitches. It's not like I'm really ripping stitches, I'm just bringing it back to the point of as long as it is, so I can cut it. Okay, so that. All right. And that didn't bring me to the end either. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press this. All right. So it brought me to the end here. So that's good. I don't want anything too small here. 
So I'll just go ahead and I'll cut this at an angle. Like that. All right, now, actually, I'm gonna have to cut it here. I will have to cut it here because I need that straight line for this edge. So that's all right, we'll just cut it just like that. So now I've got a straight edge here and a straight edge here. So to keep just going clockwise here. All right, I'll take this yellow, let's go here. I'll take this yellow out of my scrap bin and I think I'm gonna put that right here. On this angle. All right, now again, it's not touching the edge, so I kind of, if we want to call that like a mess up, I don't really think it's a mess up. I'm not going to, I won't call it a mess up because I'm, I'm having no plan for this. So that is what happens if you don't have a plan going into it. You might have to come back, cut this off at an angle. So you have your straight line and I can just go ahead and add another piece there. And I'm going to iron that first. You never really get stuck because you can pull yourself out of any way that you find that you might, You, if you feel like you're doing it wrong, you can usually always pull yourself out. Just grabbing from my scrap bin. So here is a shirt that has already been cut into. It's going to cut a piece off here. I'm going to go ahead and cut this seam off here. I just don't want that bulk. All right, and you can see the buttons and everything are here. I'm not even gonna take those off. I'm gonna leave them because I'm not gonna use them and I won't sew over them. My piece is plenty big. I'm gonna line this side up, okay? Now it's you can see I'm not perfectly straight here and that's okay. I'm, I, all I care is I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna go from there down to here. So I might have to bring my seam over a little bit on this one. I mean, for the most part, I'm only showing you some things that could come up here. You don't have to worry about it too much because as you make these, you're going to get better and better at making uh, crazy quilts that you won't leave. Typically, you won't leave that much. And I'll show you in a minute once I start sewing without, um, you know, without given a demonstration. I'm just trying to show you right now all the little things that could go wrong. Not to worry too much about. Don't pull those stitches. Now, if you want to trim that up just a little bit, because there's quite a bit of fabric in there, you can. It's going to be pretty big. You can see how big. It's going to be this big. Do I want to leave that or do I want to put a couple of pieces there? On this particular block, I'm going to go ahead and leave it. I'm just going to go press this right here. And, I'll, and since this is so huge of a piece, I am just to get rid of the bulk. I'm going to, I'm just going to trim this a little bit. I want to leave a lot of the bulk on a lot of them because I wanted to show you what it's like when we go to trim it up. All right. So now I've got this side left. And I've got this side left. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to trim this piece to go match that seam. Now I only have this and this. All right. Now what I'm going to do, keep grabbing. I think I'm going to actually go to this one first because this piece will fit here and not here. And I want to use this piece right now. I'm not even going to take the salvage off because I can see as long as I'm over, I'm going to be cutting that when I get up there. I'm not cutting that off. It's just another step I don't really need to take. It's not necessary. All right. I'm going to just slow down. Make sure 
sure I'm over my foundation piece to be sure that I've got it cleared. It's super long. I'm just going to snip it. Okay. Now I'm going to open that up. And you can see there's my salvage. Not in the way at all. It's going to get cut right off. And it covers... You can see that it covers my corner. So I am so good with that. Give that a press. And now we're down to one piece. So I'm not even gonna do anything. See how this might be in my way? It's really not gonna be in my way. When I trim this down, it's gonna get cut right off. So this one is going to, I am going to cut the salvage off because it's just big enough and I don't really want all that bulk right there on the corner. So I'm over here and I'm overhanging. I have an overhang here and I have an overhang here. So I'm good to go. All right, I'm going to open this up and let's turn it over so you can see my square. Okay, I'm going to cut this because it's so long and I'll just cut it right here. It's going to keep ending up with scraps. You're going to get scraps after scraps after scraps. You're going to get tiny pieces. You're going to get slivers. You're going to get big pieces. I just throw them back in my same bin unless they are so skinny. I just am going to throw them in my pile of um, what I'm going to make all my dog beds and um, cat beds with. Those are just shreds. If you ever find that you have got yourself into a little mess, like you didn't sew a right, there's a little mess up somewhere. You can always hide it, no matter what. Like I just added these stitches over a little mess up. I had to add another piece of fabric because I had um, a little hole over here. So I added the stitches and it just makes it look like it was just meant to be. I'm not going to put these stitches everywhere, but every once in a while I do want to... Uh, embellish it a little bit with some extra stitches. I can see that I have a mess up here. Can you see that little, I've missed the seam. And it's too late for me to go back in. Remember, I wanna show you how to fix this. So what I'm gonna do is, see how I've got the seam already sewn over here? How am I gonna pull this back to sew here? I can't. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to just go ahead and cover this up. So I'm going to use this bright orange because I want more contrast in my quilt. Anyway, so let's just cut a little piece of this off. All right. All I'm going to do, I'm going to lay that there. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put on some fancy stitches. So it's going to have a little piece of raw edge on it. But you know what? I am okay with that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just line my presser foot up here. I'm going to change my stitch. I'm staying right on the edge. So now I'm actually appliquing on top of my crazy foot. All right. You will never, ever know this. It's going to look like I did this purposely.
Okay, so now I've got this on top, which is actually, it's actually just an applique. I love the look of this one. It's just so pretty to me. Okay. This one I did a lot of extra stitches on too. Now you could also just change the color thread on those top stitches when you go with your little fancy stitches. If you decide to do that, or even with a straight stitch, you could just change. If you ever want to sew on top of it, just change the color thread. Put something that really is going to stick out. That would look good too. All right, I'm going to spin this around. Cut the other two sides. Every once in a while, you see that I went over a scrap. <laughs> Most of the time, I'm going to leave it. But if it's, if it's right there on the edge, it's fine. I hope you enjoyed making this crazy scrappy quilt block. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Remember to keep it simple. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Bye.